Welcome to Database Mart's channel. In this video, we'll show you the VPS ordering process, VPS deployment, control panel features, VPS connection and management, as well as upgrading and downgrading options, helping you use our VPS with ease and efficiency. Step 1. Order VPS. You can first visit our official website and select the server that best fits your needs to place an order. If you're not sure which option is most suitable, you can click on live chat and our professional team will recommend one for you. After clicking order now, you will be directed to the order confirmation page. Here, you can review the server configuration details, including CPU cores, memory, storage, bandwidth, backup, IP address, and data center location. Next, you can choose the server's operating system, set the server name and password, decide whether to add extra resources, select the billing cycle, and fill in any additional requirements in the notes section. Once everything is confirmed, click Checkout to complete the payment. The system will automatically deliver your server within 5 to 10 minutes. Step 2. Understanding the VPS control panel. Once the server has been delivered, you can manage your VPS through the control panel. Let's take a look at the main features of the server management interface. First, you can view the server's connection details, including the IP address, port, username, password, and operating system. You will use this information to log into your server. Please note that when entering the IP address, you need to add the port number at the end. For example, if the port is 10033, you must include it when logging in. We also provide detailed documentation, and we will demonstrate the login process later in this video. Secondly, you can view the basic information of your purchase plan, and you may update the server name, adjust the billing cycle and method, or renew your plan with just one click. Scrolling further down, you will see real-time monitoring of your server's running status. If one or more resource usage levels continuously exceed 80%, we recommend upgrading to a higher configuration or purchasing add-ons in the scaling section to achieve better performance. Please note that upgrading or adding resources may cause brief downtime. If sufficient resources are available on the host server, the system will automatically allocate them after payment, and downtime usually lasts only 3 to 5 minutes. If resources on the host server are insufficient, migration to other host server with more capacity will be required. This involves data migration, during which the IP address will change, and the process is typically completed within 24 hours. After reviewing the basic information, you can also enter the server management section. Here, you'll see the server's current status and uptime, along with five quick action buttons for different management options. Reset, immediately turn off and restart your VPS without saving data. Turn off, stops your VPS and terminates all processes without saving data. Shut down, power off your VPS completely after saving changes and closing processes. Pause, temporarily freezes all processes and saves the state to disk. Reboot, gracefully shuts down and restarts your VPS saving data and properly terminating processes. This is useful when the server encounters issues like freezing or a black screen. In addition, the control panel also supports reinstalling the operating system. Please note that reinstalling will erase all data on the server, so be sure to back up your files in advance to avoid business disruptions. Step 3. How to connect to a VPS. Our VPS supports access from multiple devices, including Windows PC, Linux PC, Mac, and Android phone. In this video, we will focus on demonstrating how to connect to both Windows VPS and Linux VPS from a Windows PC. If you need tutorials for other devices, please check the comment section for more guides. If you selected a server with the Windows operating system, you can directly use the built-in remote desktop connection tool in Windows. In the search bar on your taskbar, type remote desktop connection or RDP and open it. Then, Enter your server's IP address along with the port number and click Connect in the lower right corner. Next, enter your server's username and password. You may also check Remember Me for quicker login in the next time. After clicking OK, a remote connection will be established. If you see a prompt saying the identity of the remote server cannot be verified, simply click Yes to proceed with the connection. If you selected a server with the Linux operating system, you'll need a third-party tool to connect such as PuTTY, Shell, or XRDP. Here, we'll use PuTTY as an example. Start by downloading and running PuTTY.exe on your computer. Under the Session tab, 
Enter your server's IP address in the host name field. The default port is 22, and the connection type should be set to SSH. Next, go to the connection menu and open the data section. Here, enter your username, usually administrator, in the auto login username field. To make future logins easier, go back to session, give this session a name, and click save. This way, you can simply double click the saved session name to connect the next time. When you're ready, click open. A terminal window will appear, prompting you for a password. Type in your server password and press enter. Remember, the password won't be visible as you type. If you want to paste it, simply right click inside the PuTTY window and press enter to complete the login. That concludes our full demonstration of the VPS process, from purchasing and management to connection. We hope this video helps you get started quickly and use Database Mart's VPS more efficiently. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be glad to provide you with timely and professional assistance.